In last week's video, I spoke to you about the role of your water ionizer when it comes to viruses like the coronavirus. So I decided to stick with that same subject matter for this week's video and talk about how you can use your water ionizer to create a safe and effective hand and household sanitizer without using harsh chemicals or skin drying alcohols. Hey guys, I'm Dean Snyder from Snyder Health. Welcome to this week's episode of Water Ionizer Wednesday. We all know that drinking hydrogen rich alkaline water from a water ionizer can help reduce acidic waste in the body and bolster your immune system. But not everyone is aware that their same machine can create levels of both acidic and alkaline water that can be used as a sanitizing agent to help stop the spread of both bacteria and viruses. And it does it without any irritating chemicals or alcohols. In this short video, I'll explain what you need to do to achieve that and talk about how to use the end product to sanitize your hands and also to sanitize the surfaces of your house. Everyone is aware that the most prudent course of action when it comes to halting the spread of viruses and bacteria is good hand washing practices, as well as keeping often touched surfaces clean and sanitized. In the last few weeks, people have been running to the grocery store to buy expensive hand sanitizers and cleaning solutions, but very often those products contain chemicals that can irritate your skin and your sinuses. There are a ton of videos online that can teach you how to make your own hand sanitizers at home using safe and natural ingredients. But if you already own a water ionizer, you have the tool required to make the safest and most effective hand sanitizer with absolutely no ingredients except for one, water. That's right, electrolyzed oxidizing water. Water that you can create with your own water ionizer can quickly kill bacteria and denature viruses, preventing the spread of those viruses and reducing the chances of infection. Let's talk about how to do that. So we know from many studies that water that is either extremely acidic or extremely alkaline will both kill bacteria and denature viruses. When you denature a virus, you're destroying its outer protein coat, causing that virus to no longer be able to carry out its cellular function. So that means the goal here is to create water that is extremely alkaline with a pH of about 11.9 or extremely acidic with a pH of about 2.7. Many of the newer ionizers, especially ionizers that have a higher plate count, like my Vesta H2 machine that you see here, which has nine plates of ionization, can achieve those levels without any special help. But for those of you that have older machines that are not as powerful, stick around because I'll tell you what you can do to bring those pH levels closer to those required. If you own a water ionizer, you're already aware that your ionizer comes with different levels of ionization strength that you can choose from. Levels one, two, three, four, and so on. So the first thing you want to do is choose the highest available alkaline setting your machine has to offer. Then you want to slow the flow rate down to the slowest flow that the ionizer will allow without shutting itself off. In a previous video, I talked about how all water ionizers have a built-in flow sensor to tell it whether there's water flowing through the machine or not. And if it senses that the water flow has stopped, the ionizer will then shut itself off. So you want to slow the flow rate down of the water going through your machine, but you want to do it without triggering the flow sensor. If the flow rate through the machine is too slow, then the ionizer will shut itself off, even if technically there's water going through it. So again, adjust the flow rate of the water to the machine to the slowest you can get it without triggering the flow sensor. What that does is give the incoming water the most contact time with the ionization plates which will cause the alkalinity level to go up much higher than it would if you were just running the ionizer at a normal flow rate. More contact time equals higher achievable pH levels. Now, if you have a newer ionizer or one that has a higher plate count, you should be able to achieve that 11.9 or 2.7 pH level without anything additional to do. But what if your ionizer is older or has a lower plate count? Let's talk about what you can do to boost your pH levels on that type of ionizer. The way that you can really boost the levels in your ionizer to get that acidic pH level that will kill bacteria or viruses on contact, and you can even do this with a newer ionizer, is with the addition of sodium chloride, salt. 
Most quality water ionizers have some type of mineral port to allow you to add additional minerals to the water. For example, my older Jupiter Melody has a port directly on top of the machine. In my newer Vest H2, the mineral port is part of the filter. If you take a look at this little basket right here, you'll see that it has beads of calcium in it. This basket is what gets inserted into those mineral ports. But instead of adding calcium, what you want to do is fill this little basket up with rock salt. I mean something like pink Himalayan rock salt that you would buy for a salt grinder, like this stuff right here. By inserting the salt into your ionizer and choosing the strongest alkaline level on your machine, you'll be creating both hypochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. Both of those will really help give your ionizer the ability to create super oxidizing water that will help to kill bacteria and viruses on contact. But please be aware, you never want to drink this water. You only want to use it to create that sanitizing water that we're looking for. Now, let's talk about what to do with that water. Very simply, you want to collect that water in a spray bottle. You have the choice of the high alkaline water from the stainless steel hose on top of your machine or the super acidic water that comes out of the acidic hose on the bottom of the machine. Both will work, but personally, I would rather collect the acidic water, which contains hypochlorous acid, because that'll really put the cherry on the virus killing cake. So in that case, after you add the salt to the mineral port, turn your machine on and let water run through it for about 30 seconds. That'll give a chance for the salt to get into the ionized water. Then collect the water in a spray bottle. Fill up a few of them if you have the bottles. Now as a hand sanitizer, all you need to do is spray the water generously onto your hands and rub it in long enough that the water has a chance to do its job. Then for any kind of surfaces in the house, just spray the water onto the surface and let it dry. Again, the super acidic nature of that water will kill all bacteria and viruses on contact and without any type of alcohols that might dry out the skin on your hands. The great part is you can make as much of this as you need at a cost that's a fraction of the cost of buying all kinds of stuff from the store. I mean, you can make gallons of this stuff if you need it. The last thing I want to mention is to make sure you remove the salt from the ionizer after you finish making the sanitizing water before you go back to making drinking water. You definitely don't want to drink water that's full of salt and sodium hydroxide. So after you remove the salt, make sure to run your water ionizer for like a minute to allow any residual salt to exit the machine. Then you should be good to go. Keep in mind that you can also use the acid water as a gargle. Just make sure you don't swallow it. If you have a really strong newer machine where you don't need to add any salt, then you could just go back to using your machine as you normally would without having to run any extra water through the ionizer. If you do happen to have an older water ionizer that isn't very powerful and you'd like to upgrade your machine to a newer, more powerful system, I'll post a link in the description below where you can take a look at our water ionizer upgrade program, which will save you a ton of money. Also, make sure to check out the description area for links to some documentation regarding the information I gave you in this video. And let me know in the comment section below which water ionizer you own and if you were successful in creating that really acidic water that you would need. Make sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking on this big round button right here. And you can check out other Water Ionizer Wednesday videos by clicking on either one of those right over there. Until next week, stay safe, be healthy, wash your hands, and be smart. Don't sneeze and cough all over your family. They're not going to like it.